Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Mukesh's Tech Space. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I post video tutorials on AWS LightCell, WordPress setup and configuration, mostly on the AWS platform. Uh, I also have videos on how to set up easy to use web hosting tools and services. Uh, there are some videos around WordPress tips and tricks, mostly for the beginners. So if you are interested in this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. I also have an accompanying website along with my channel. It's called webhostingforbeginners.net. Um, for each video that I make, I have a post on here that details out the steps that I perform in the video, as well as the commands that I use so that you can use those for copying and pasting if you're running through these tutorials. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to install and configure Memcached module. Similar to Redis, which I show you how to set up in my last video, is an object level caching mechanism that will cache your website's dynamic queries in memory. Uh, enabling this module will prevent your application from hitting the database for the same request. And as a result, it will speed up your dynamic website. This is different from CDN services, and I explained the difference between a CDN and a service like this in my previous video. So uh, check that out if you're interested in learning about the difference between the two services. Uh, but without further ado, let's get started configuring Memcached. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to remind you to back up your WordPress instance or your dynamic websites instance, especially if it's in LightCell, it's easy to take a backup of it. Just make a snapshot in case anything goes wrong, you can always revert back to that instance. Um, also, keep in mind that I am using the Bitnami WordPress blueprint that's in the AWS LightCell for this tutorial. If you have a different setup, um, a different LAMP or a WordPress setup, or you have a different dynamic website that's not WordPress, uh, some of these commands will be slightly different and I will try to link to some documentation that may help you in case that's this that's the case or you can always just Google and find out if there are uh, tutorials that are specific to your instance and configuration. Um, so let's get started. First thing is uh, I'm going to create a instance. If you already have your instance, you just can skip this part, but I'm going to set up an instance to run this tutorial on and create the instance. All right, my instance is provisioned and up and running. Um, I'm going to log in to uh, SSH on the server. I use Bitvise SSH client, um, but you can use what you like. I go ahead and log in. Okay, once you're on your SSH terminal, um, if this is a new server you're setting up, then we'll run a couple of commands to just upgrade all the packages. So run sudo apt install or sudo apt update. Y. Then the next thing would be sudo apt upgrade dash y. Okay, so um, for Bitnami. Uh, instance, what we'll do is install the memcache module. So sudo apt install memcache. Perfect. So it's installed. Let's go ahead and start it. sudo service uh, memcache. And it's enabled. So next what we will do is install the uh, PHP module uh, for memcached. So let's go ahead and do PE or sudo 
PECL, install and cached. Oh, I misspelled it right there, so let's try again. And just hit no or hit enter on these command prompts. All right, now we'll modify the update the PHP INI file and add the extension or enable the extension uh, line for this module. So sudo opt bitnami, uh, where did it store it? Uh, PHP, hit C, and then php.ini. Search for, I think in the PHP uh, bit, uh, module that is installed with Bitnami, they have the line memcached, but they don't have it enabled. So we'll just go here and enable. If this is not in your PHP INI, then just make sure you add extension equals memcached.so. Save the file, and then we're going to restart sudo. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and restart all the services. Bitnami ctl script.sh restart. Okay, now let's check if PHP, if the memcache module is um, enabled in PHP. So php i. And then we'll grep for memcached uh, support. And it should come back with memcached support enabled. So we're done with this part. Let's go ahead and move over to the WordPress configuration now. So in WordPress, let me load up the website. There we go. And then let's head on over to the WP admin. And I need the password. So... Okay, so now we're in the WP admin. Uh, we are going to install, actually, before we install and activate the caching plugin, let's go ahead and make one additional item, line item entry in our WP config. So let's go to apps, WordPress, HG docs, WP config. We need to enable the WP cache attribute. So just come down to, I typically just come down here right after WP debug. We'll say define WP cache set that to true and save that. So now let's come back here, add a plugin. Uh, there are probably various plugins that support the memcache module, uh, but the one that we'll use is, let's just search for cache. The one we'll use is the W3 total cache. It's a pretty popular one. So safe to enable and activate that. And let's go ahead and come over to performance and it's gonna come up to the setup guide. So here you can accept or decline about collection of data. We'll decline, hit next, click on test page cache, and you'll should, you should see now memcached as an option to pick. Click on test database cache, and similarly, you should see an option to pick memcached in this list here. There we go, and then object cache. Same thing, pick memcache, and then test browser cache if you want to enable any browser cache level attributes. Lazy load if you want to enable that or any other caching options, that's up to you, you can enable. But with this, this should now have your WordPress website connected to the memcache module and start to cache uh, commonly used or um, uh, database queries and object cache that are being requested over and over again. So I think that was it. This tutorial is completed. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it to your friends. And uh, if you have any issues or run into any problems, I'll try my best to answer them. 
uh, please note them down in the comments below. And until the next video, take care.